Shalom, my siblings. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Children of the Most High. What's goody? What's up? What's up? So, bless y'all. We're going to get into this word today. It's a beautiful morning. Ah, uh, do do do. do. <laughs> I hope everyone is smiling because he is amazing and he's worthy of us to be in that type of place spiritually, mentally, physically, even financially, right? All the Ali's <laughs> creatively, all the Ali's, right? Uh, chlorophyll, sea salt, water. Um, and then I made a, a lemonade the other day. And so I just mixed that in there. The lemonade just lemons, water, and some maple syrup. Um, I was just only because I got tired of agave and I didn't have any dates. And so I had some maple syrup in there um, because I prefer to have maple syrup with my milk teas. It just tastes better when I do the matcha milk tea. So it was in the house, so I used it. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are going to talk about some financial things today, bless y'all. And we're going to discuss these things as Yah allows um, from Matthew chapter 6. So we're going to read Matthew chapter 6. Oh, it's only 34 verses. We're going to read through Matthew um, chapter 6. We're dis we'll discuss, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see um, the instruction and the revelation in which the Most High provides through the Ruach HaKadosh. Hallelujah. I'm here on assignment, okay? Or else I would not be here on this beautiful Shabbat. But in all things and always is obedience over sacrifice. Hallelujah. So, yeah. I am reading from the King James Version. Um, yeah. I would try to take out the ye and that because I feel like you can understand. It's just that I feel like it flows better when it sounds more too, uh, more digestible. Let's use that word. Chapter six, take heed that you do not your alms. I have my one of my versions says that you do not do your mitzvot. Okay, this one says alms, and it labels it as charitable deeds. Yes, absolutely, but it doesn't end there. It's not just like oh, don't tell anybody that you gave the homeless man on the corner five dollars today. Um, you also like. Even in your family, you don't have to say, yo, I'm about to go help my mom get the groceries out of the car. So, you know what I mean? How you want me to say that? You don't, when you do the things in which you're supposed to be doing anyway, thank you, Abba. You do not have to sound an alarm system, right? You don't. And that goes with, Everything in the house. As a wife, you do not have to sound an alarm system. Well, I do this, 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 and this in the house. Right? And my mom is really good about that. As it relates to how she tends to the house. Right? So, um, for the most part, you know what I mean? She does it way more than I do. Like, I do wash dishes typically when I'm in the house. By myself, I'm washing dishes, but when I wake up in the morning, there's some dishes left over, like, from when she was leaving out to work or, you know what I mean, when she was cooking. And then some nights or even, like I said, during the day, clean up um, after myself and my daughter. But for the most part, my mom washes the dishes. It's like I cook, right, and my mom will make sure that the dishes have been washed um, so that I can cook or sometimes as I'm cooking just in case I need to reuse something um and, it, and it's funny because it's an ongoing joke because sometimes like my daughter and I will try to like hide dishes like say we're in the living room 
and we'll hear my mom in the kitchen, right? We'll be like, all right, well, we're going to sit right here with our plates until, you know what I mean? She goes upstairs or something like that. And she will come. Like, she will come and get your plate. And then if you're like, my God, it, she'll look at you like, give me the plate. I'm washing dishes. And um, she doesn't sound an alarm system or some. Well, I'm always washing dishes or, you know what I mean? She doesn't, she doesn't make a big deal out of it. She just takes it on as her contribution to the house or her responsibilities. And I try to make sure that I, I help her. Like, I'm not one of those people and I'm trying to teach my daughter this too, right? Just as we grow, um, as people of Yaba, as women specifically, I feel like this is important for us. I'm also going to teach my sons though. I'm not even going to hold you. Like, I don't, I don't ask my mom if she needs help. I just go help her, right? Like, I just go help her when she, if I know that she's coming in the house, um, I typically am either walking towards the door or if I'm washing dishes and I see her, I'll either unlock the door or I'll, um, stop what I'm doing to go take things out of her hands. Not because she can't carry them. Obviously, she carried them from wherever she was to the door. But it's like, nah, let me let me help. If she's in the kitchen washing dishes, I'll typically either dry them as she's washing them or I'll do something else, right? I don't ask my mom if she needs help. I just go help her. And I think that's important, right? That's an important mindset that we as children of Yasha have towards each other. Whether you need help or not, if I'm in the position to help, right, I'm going to just help. And if you tell me, no, 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 I don't want your help as I'm helping, then cool. But I'm not going to say, hey, do you need help? And if I feel like I do need to ask, instead of saying, do you need help? Because most of the time we don't. Most of the time we are in a routine and we have the routine. Even if the routine is an overwhelming routine, we have the routine. And so it's like, instead of saying, hey, do you need help? Because no, the answer is no. It's out. What can I help you with? Right? Not do you need help. I know you don't need help. But as I'm here watching you do whatever it is, what can I help you with? And that also eliminates the responsibility of you to know how to help them. Right? Because... Like, my dad is real good with his hands, right? Like, he can build anything and he can f almost fix. I don't think there's anything that my daddy don't know, doesn't know how to fix. Like, he's really, really good with cars as well. And so, like, say if I saw him, I don't know, fixing a car. It's certain things that he has taught me how to do. Yes, bless y'all, but not a lot. So, I wouldn't say, you know what I mean, you want my help? Because I know he's going to be like, uh like what so i would say how can i help you right because now i don't have to know how to fix the car if i say how can i help you he's like oh you can hand me xyz or you can hold xyz or you can pour X. you get what i'm saying it it eliminates the responsibility of you to have to know what's what in a situation like if i'm cooking and my daughter says well how can i help you i can say oh well you can make the lemonade which she um did the other day or i can say you can hand me whatever right like it eliminate and it also opens up the person in whom you're trying to assist or you're trying to help it opens them up to also look at well here are some some little things that it helps them to know that they can delegate things without feeling guilty it takes the guilt of them needing help away from them and it takes the responsibility of you knowing how to do everything the way that they do away from you so when when so i encourage us as people of yah especially women of yah but people of yah as a whole you know what i mean because men should do this as well when it comes to looking out for your brother when it comes to looking out for your household when it comes to doing for yourself too you know what i mean Open up some space that gives you guys some more, some more room to move around in you because you're not so full of tasks. Um, I don't know where this came from, but bless y'all. We, we needed that. We needed to know. I said, wherever the Ruach HaKadosh leads us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
So, you know what I mean? It opens you up. It gives you, it gives you a little bit more freedom within your Ruach, within your being, right? Within your spirit to move around and reveal things and strengthen things and heal things if you're not so full up all the time, right? And in this one example of helping and being helped, you get what I'm saying? When you're being helped and you recognize and realize you don't have to do every single thing and you can delegate some of the smaller tasks and you don't have to feel guilty for having help, right? You don't have to feel guilty for having help because that's the thing. That is a thing for, for some people, you know what I mean? Um, not just for men, but for women as well, especially mothers. I think just oppressed people as a whole. And it isn't necessarily, I don't think, and I could be wrong. I don't necessarily think it's a pride thing as much as it is a conditioning thing. When you're conditioned to do something and you get to the point where you can do it without thinking. Um, even if you need help, you don't need help because you're used to that load. It's like, nah, I'm used to it being this heavy. Like if you've seen moms for real, for real outside, like without their husbands, they can whip that stroller out while holding the carrier, right? In one hand, and they've opened the trunk with the other and they've leaned in and got the stroller and they know how to use arms and legs and ways that you, you're like, yo, you just really just open the stroller, put the carrier in the stroller, use your foot to unlock it. And now you're using your elbow to push it while you get, <laughs> you have unpacked the baby and put the baby in the stroller and then you got groceries. You've already strapped the baby in the carrier. You have, I didn't even know the, the uh, stroller folded like that. And you to put the groceries in your car by yourself, right? Because she's used to that load. She's used to being responsible. Like, it has to get done. And so, I feel like we as a people um, have have adopted or adapted in that mindset. And so, we move like that. And so, even when it's overwhelming, we don't ask for help. Right? Sometimes we don't even want to be helped. It's just like... And so, in that, think of, look at the people in your household. Thank you, Abba. Look at the people in your life. Who who could who could you help? Who could you ask, how can I help you in this? Whether it's a um financial decision, right? How can I help? How can I help? Whether it's a spiritual decision, how can I help? And when they ask you and when and when their response is no, I got it, pray. Pray and ask y'all to help them because some people don't want help. And that's okay. It doesn't make them a bad person because they don't want to be helped. Some of us are really just comfortable in doing what we're doing. Um, and some of us don't know in which way someone else can help. It's like y'all still revealing what's going on to us. So we don't really know how you can help now yet because we don't even know. We don't have a full understanding of what it, whatever is even going on at this point. Um, but if you can help, ask how you can help. Or if you like me, just just go help. Just just go. <laughs> I just go help my mom. And even sometimes with my daughter, um, I know she likes to clean her room by herself. But I'll just I'll go in there sometimes, and I'll just start telling her like, all right, you need to pick this up, this that, and the third. Or sometimes I'll help. Contingent though, and this is a great lesson. Thank you, Abba. Contingent on. How much instruction, how much help has already been offered, right? Because sometimes you have to um, discern, well, not sometimes, all the time, you have to discern whether your assistance will be helpful or hindrance. Hallelujah. In all things, prayer and supplication. Let's get back to this word. <laughs> Let's get back to this word because that was a lot. All right. So, and we got all of that out of take heed that you do not do your alms. Or your, uh, like I said, mitzvah to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Abba, which is in the Shamayim. Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before the, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you do alms or mitzvah, 
Let not your left hand know what your right hand does. That means sometimes you just got to make moves. And you have to make moves without suggestion, opinion, right? Agreement. When y'all tells you to do something, when y'all has placed a vision in your in your heart, when y'all has given you something, they say you're supposed to write it down, make a plan, and run. <laughs> um, but no, really though, in certain situations, in a lot of situations, you know what I mean? Um, y'all give special clearance to those he knows will go the way. You know what I mean? And sometimes you are in the midst of those who don't have the same clearance that you do. And there will be things that y'all will allow you to understand because of his own righteousness. It's nothing of our own doing. There are things that y'all will allow you to understand, allow you to perceive, allow you to be able to do, allow you to be able to go that others can't go. And sometimes when you share these things with other people or if you think too long upon it for yourself, um, it will be a distraction and a distortion of what's really happening okay and so that's why you can't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that's what it means it's like everything isn't a we thing some things is just a me thing some things is just a you thing when it comes to what yah is requiring of us hallelujah that you're that your midst both may be in secret and your father which sees in secret shall reward you openly Okay, sometimes even your prayers, right? Like sometimes, yeah, I will call you to pray with and for other people in the midst of other people. And sometimes it's not. You don't have to go around saying, I pray for you. Like that's between you and y'all. Okay. That's between you and y'all. And sometimes, sometimes even for me, um, <laughs> I've realized and I learned a new word too yesterday about what it is, but I can't think of the actual word. It starts with a P. But anyway, I'm, the definition is like you are you're a naturally calm person, right? And you're not you don't get overly angry or excited, and that's me. And so it's like sometimes, yeah, uh, answer a prayer and he'll he'll show me immediately, and sometimes I have to think back on it, like oh. Well, wait I asked you and you and I don't say anything I'll just be to myself like yo I, I don't like that it'll come from my other person they're like hey yes because I had such and such and such and such and such and such and I'm just like oh for real that's so cool that that happened yada yada but on the inside I'm just like well I would thank you because I asked you to do that for them or I asked you to make way for them I didn't ask you for the specific thing but bless y'all that it is happening just like that hallelujah like for sure I'm glad to see it even down to people's relationship with y'all there are some people in my life who I see growing in the most high and not only growing in their knowledge and wisdom and understanding and application of his word, but growing in their acceptance and their receiving of his grace, his mercy, and his love for them. It's like they, they are now including themselves in the in the promise. In that in which Yah has bestowed upon all his people before the earth has had even taken form. Because he knew that the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach would do what it do, honey. And so it's like to see them walking in this and accepting and receiving that which Yah has placed on them as theirs. It's like it's nothing that you can do. You know what I mean? Yah placed this on you as, as yours. And because you have chosen to be obedient to him, right? You get to enjoy the benefits that's such a lame word for what I'm trying to describe, but you get to enjoy, yeah, the benefits and the rewards of walking um, circumspect, seeing spiritual things as spiritual things, because all things are spiritual things, you know? Read First Corinthians chapter 2. I just reread it yesterday, and I was just like, yeah, I'm... 
All right, so first five. <laughs> We're going to get through it. I promise we're not going to be here all day. It's already 20 minutes in. All right. And when you pray, and y'all will be done though. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they shall have their reward. But when you pray, okay, but you, when you pray entering to your closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father, to your Abba who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. We just talked about that. We just talked about that. And my daughter is big on this right now. And I'm trying to get her to be um, comfortable. But that's just the mom in me. And that's just the, uh, the experience that I have. Because I know sometimes when I was learning, I used to be kind of like uncomfortable um not telling you that I had a relationship with y'all but it was only if you kind of like asked and people would ask um and I'm just talking about like when I was a child thinking as a child not necessarily a child age but also thinking as a child because I've never been afraid to like yo y'all should say your grace you should make sure you pray and praying for people like I've prayed for random people on the street that I didn't even know y'all said get out the car right here at the stop sign and pray for these people I used to be like, ah, right? But I said that to say, like, you don't, it doesn't have to be flamboyant or elongated, right? And it doesn't have to be outward. Like, I'll ask my daughter to pray for me and she'll put her hand on my head and I don't hear nothing. I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> but that's just where she is right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you don't have to have these elongated prayers that last 15 minutes just because somebody else has these prayers sometimes you have a place on our heart to keep going and you, you feel the ruach getting stronger in you as you pray and you look around and you've been praying for 30 40 minutes and there are also times where thank you is enough and i always feel like it's not enough i always feel like it's not enough but there are times when y'all it's like that's all i'm requiring of you right now in this moment is to acknowledge me and say thank you and it doesn't have to be an elongated thank you. It could be like a subtle, quiet thank you. It doesn't have to be a thank you that is verbal outside. It could be a heartfelt in your spirit thank you, right? And for me, right now, it's funny because I was just reflecting back on like screaming, hollering, tears, jumping up and down. Like people asking my daughter, is your mom okay type Thank you, Abba. Oh my gosh, thank you, Abba. Just because you're worth like turned up, like turn, 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 turn. And there has been a settling in my ruach here for a good little minute to the point where I had to ask you. I'm like, Abba, hold up, because what's up? Usually we, but it doesn't always have to be like that. You know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be a everybody type thing you know what i mean because when you screaming and hollering like that yes you're you and y'all in that moment right but it also involves other people and sometimes y'all just wants to have these intimate times with you and sometimes you just sometimes i i know for me and i'm saying us right because we siblings sometimes we just want to have that intimate time with y'all where nobody is joining in nobody is um, putting their hand on your back, saying, yeah, because they might not even know why you are worshiping y'all at the level and why you are just turned up the way you do. And so they assuming that you doing that because something is wrong and you, and because a lot of times people see, when they see worship at that level, it's like, oh, well, what's going on? Like, y'all's trying to break them through something. Bro, I'm worshiping y'all because he's amazing and I love him. Like, this is a joyful noise, a joyful praise. I am not worshiping out of despair. <laughs> But sometimes people, based on their relationship and where they are in their imuna or their faith, they might assume that that's what's going on. And so now they disrupting your worship because it's all it's gonna be all right. Yes, 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 it's done. It's just like what is done? What is gonna be all right? Like you know what I'm saying? And so sometimes we just require those intimate times where yeah, where it's just like I, I just want to talk to you with you. I don't want to talk to you amongst. You get what I mean? And that and that's where individual relationship comes in. It's okay to just it for it to be just you and y'all. 
I know tradition has taught us that there has to be a fellowship. Am I so when I talk to it, so you, I'm not communicating when I can communicate with the most high? When I sit and I and I spend time with the Ruach HaKadosh, am I not in fellowship? Am I supposed the only way that I can fellowship is if I fellowship with man? Uh, you it can just be you and y'all. And a lot of times that's what's best. Because you can hear y'all. Because you're not finding yourself um, feeling like you constantly got to keep praying because so-and-so is praying. You don't feel like you have to understand at a deeper level because so-and-so is just going off with the revelation that they've gotten or whatever. Like, you remove all of the possible distractions. I'm not saying that people are distracted, but the possible distractions. And it's just you and y'all. And don't put a time frame on that. Don't be like, oh... <clears throat> Ah, but it's been a month since I've been screaming, hollering, jumping around, speaking in, in in tongues, as people say, call it, right? Speaking the speaking the language of your anointing. And I feel like, what's up? It's just like, yo, just keep spending that intimate time with y'all. Sometimes y'all just want it to be just you and him in quiet and peace for a little while. All right, I don't know. Y'all is really doing what he want to do with this conversation today because I feel like we talking about a lot of things. <laughs> All right, verse seven. <laughs> but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Much speaking. Not only in prayer, but just much speaking in general. Be not you therefore, mm, sorry, don't be like them. For your father, your Abba knows what things you have need of before you ask him, Okay. After this manner, therefore you shall pray, our Abba, in the Shamayim, Kadashmeka. I'm not trying to stunt, right? Because I'm probably not even pronouncing it, pronouncing it right. But that be, that's what it's, I always see that. Whenever I see the, the prayer that the world, the so-called Lord's Prayer, right? That's what I see. That's what I see. That's the most beautiful part to me, right? Our Abba in the Shamayim. Who is he? Where is he? Krashmeka, set apart and holy is your name. Set apart and holy is your name. What does it mean to be set apart and holy? What does it mean to be righteous? What does it mean to be just? What does it mean to be sovereign? What does it mean to be true? What does it mean to be pure? What does it mean to be perfect? And perfecting in your perfection. Yah is perfect in Yah's perfection. In his perfect perfection. He is perfecting his creation that is already perfect. Gosh almighty, Abba. You are perfecting that which is already perfect. So that's why. It, it come, Man. But I'm going to tell you what it say. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in the Shamayim. Right there right there you are addressing yeah as for who he is not for what but for who you are our abba right right you are our abba in the shamayim right there you are our leading authority above all else set apart is your name Perfect and holy is your name. Just, righteous, true is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in the earth, not on the earth, in the earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in the Shamayim. As it is in the Shamayim, so it is in me, under your authority, by your power, walking in fullness and truth because of your hand. Abba Yah, have your way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Abba Yah. That's it. Right there. That's when when you say that kingdom come, that will be done in the earth. Abba, have your way. However, it's supposed to be according to your will, according to your plan, according to your wisdom, according to your knowledge, according to your power, according to your authority, according to your say so. I submit and surrender and, and, and am in agreement with that. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth, in me, as it is in the Shamaim. Give us this day our daily bread. Abaya, what we need for today. The wisdom that we need for today. The understanding that we need for today. The application that we need for today. Some of us, the shaking up that we need today. The peace that we need for today. The chaos that we need for today. The settling that we need for today. The destruction that we need for today. Because we told y'all his will be done. <clears throat> and y'all knows what's best for us. And sometimes peace got to be you getting sh shook up. Sometimes peace has to be you getting bopped in the back of your head. Sometimes peace has to be me removing everything from you because it's causing you distraction and, and it's keeping you from me. So I got to remove everything. And now you crying and you know who you're crying out to me. I needed you to be right here. So now you have peace because you got me. Sometimes, sometimes that's just what it is. Thank you, Abba, for that. Give us today our daily bread, our daily account, that in which we need today in order to move in spirit and in truth, in function and in love according to your will, according to your power. Whatever food we need for us today, Abba, ya, your will be done. If we don't need food today, Abba, ya, your will be done. Whatever mindset we need, whatever uh, experiences we need, Whatever needs to happen today, Abaya, for us to be in alignment with you, have your way. I'm in agreement with it. This version says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Abaya, whatever sins and transgressions, because against you and you only have our sin. Even in sinning against my brother. Thank you, Abba. I am sinning against you. When I think illly of my brother, when I act fake, towards my brother when i um conspire against my brother when i hold my brother to a standard in which i don't hold myself um accountable to adhere to when i yoke my brother this is what i'm sinning against you so in that Please forgive me for my sins, right? As I forgive those that sin against me or I forgive the depths of others because how can I hold on to their debt and expect you to lose mine? And that's big for us. That's big for us. That is major for us because people have done some things to us that we remember from... The, the people aren't even around, but the experience that you had with them is. The hurt is still there. The disappointment is still there. The anger is still there. Excuse me. Right? And some of that, some of us, none of that is there. It's just the residue of that stuff is still there. Like, if you if you get triggered the wrong way, you'll start thinking about, like, yo, I remember when. This is why I don't even deal with them anyway, because that, 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 that. I understand. I understand. For real, I understand. Repent from that. Ask y'all to forgive you from that. To strengthen you to forgive others from that. And just and when you're forgiving other people, you are not letting them off the hook. You're letting you off the hook. Okay? Because y'all's okay? Cause y'all's gonna deal with you on that. So if that helps you, so be it. I'm not forgiving you because I'm just choosing to accept what you have done. I'm forgiving you because I know that I need forgiveness from my Abba. And I know that in order for me to walk according to the way in which he has for me to walk as a son or a daughter of him, I have to be a certain vessel. I can't be a bro. You cannot pour from a broken vessel. The water will leak through and be of no good use to anyone else because now it's all squandered and splattered all over everywhere. You cannot nourish anybody with a broken vessel and in order for me to do that's my heart's desire to be a nourishment to everyone that i'm around and so in that i have to forgive people yeah that's something i reflected on the other day yeah so i was just thinking about all the lessons in which i have learned since being at my mom's house so many i'll never be able to recall them all because it's too many Yah has been teaching and teaching and teaching. Yah is constantly teaching us. Give us each day our daily bread. Yah is constantly teaching us. But one of the things that he reminded me of, it's like, yo, 
I had to teach you how to be humble <clears throat> and serve your enemies. Love your enemies and serve them too. It's like, wait, what? I didn't realize that that was a lesson that I was learning. Not saying that anyone in my household is my enemy, but but there have been times where my heart was broken. And even in that, I still had to move according to Yah. I still had to move according to the ways in which Yah had laid before me as my responsibility of motion. And also, sometimes my enemy was myself. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes you can be your own enemy because of unforgiveness, because of doubt, because of worry, because of resentment. All of these things that we hoard and harbor onto, greed, guilt, shame, um, and we become our own enemy, right? And then we get mad at ourselves and harbor unforgiveness of ourselves because we realize it's like, bro, we're looking in the mirror and it's like, it's you, you're the problem. You got to forgive yourself too. You got to serve yourself too. You got to nourish yourself too. You got to be gentle with you too. You got to hold you accountable too. The same way that you have an expectation for the motion of others, you should have an expectation for your own movement, how you do things, right? And so when y'all was talking to me about serving my enemies and how Yahushua HaMashiach knew from jump what Judas was going to do, and he still, he still looked out for him, still made sure he was great, still let him eat with him. Same thing with Peter. He knew Peter was going to deny him, told him, Kifa, you going to turn on me, bro. You like, you going to act brand new. But yeah, I'm still going to, save you i'm still gonna call you out i'm still gonna you get what i'm saying and so we have to get to that place and we can only get there with the help of the most high know that um but yeah we have to get to that place where we can forgive at that level you know what i mean you can it's one thing to say you forgive somebody and then when they come around you still ready to fight <laughs> mm. <laughs> like did you forgive them or did you not and even in some cases, even that is still forgiveness. It's like my Abba has cleansed my heart as it relates to unforgiveness with you, but I still don't have no kick in it for you. I still don't. It's people. Read scripture. We're in Matthew right now. Read Matthew. It's times where, where Yahushua HaMashiach, Yah is the standard. Yahushua HaMashiach is the visual of what it means to adhere to that standard. You get what I'm saying? And so you can read it and you'll see. You was trying to share, was not no point and he ain't play around. If he won't dealing with you, he won't dealing with you. And that's just what it was. If you weren't moving how you were supposed to be moving, why would I sit amongst you? You was trying to share, with these. Yeah, but did he spend a the night there? Did he spend a night at the thief house? And he ate with tax collectors and da -da -da. tell me what he ate. Because Yahushua HaMashiach is the law, okay? So, tell me what he ate while he was sitting with these. Did he sit and eat and drink with them? Did he break bread with them? Or did he sit amongst them and educate them according to the ways of our album? Riddle me that. Okay. Verse 9. No, I'm lying. We're way past that. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I mean, this right here. And I encourage you um, to look at different versions, right? And it's also in Luke. Look at the one in Luke too. But this right here, this is everything you need to survive in life. Matthew 6. 9 through 13 is everything you need in life. You trust in Yah for your daily everything. You asking Yah for forgiveness and you treating other people as if you know who Yah is. You acknowledging who Yah is and who you are in respect to who Yah is and you're living and you're saying you're going to live according to that. That's that's it. That's it's you're trusting him to protect you deliver me from evil Abaya, the ways of the wicked one not only outside but also inside keep my heart keep my mind continue to be my authority within child 39 minutes ah <laughs> i'm gonna do it i'm gonna separate it i'm gonna separate it 